Yet again, Recep Tayyip Erdogan is victorious. This success, however, will taste a lot sweeter for the man who's now won more than 10 successive national polls since his AK party came to power in 2002. Sunday's vote was a gamble by Erdogan, who called for the early elections at a time when Turkey's currency was at the weakest it's been in years. But it seems to have paid off for the man whose name has now become almost synonymous with that of his country. Addressing his supporters, Erdogan described Sunday as a victory for all of Turkey. The winners of this election are the 81 million Turkish citizens of this country. Each and every one is a winner in this election. Everybody exercised their rights by going to the ballot boxes and casting their votes. And I want to thank everybody. You are writing history. Going into the vote, it seemed that a galvanized opposition could prevent Erdogan from winning in the first round, forcing a runoff that could possibly pose a bigger threat to his quest to become the first president under the new constitution. The main contender, Muharram Inje of the CHP, had tried to garner support from all sections of society. He wooed the religious bases by publicly joining prayers in some cities and attempted to reach out to the right-wing blocs by promising to expel millions of Syrian refugees if elected. But as large as Inche's crowds were, or those of Erdogan, in the end what mattered were the numbers of ballots cast in their favor. Turks, who have a proud tradition of high voter turnout, did not disappoint. Early indications were that more than 86% of them participated, voting not only for a president with new powers, but also for a new parliament with 100 more members. While Erdogan's AK party were buoyant with the presidential victory, there will be disappointment over their parliamentary performance, with the AKP losing the two-third supermajority they once held, only managing to secure a simple majority with the help of their nationalist MHP allies. The big winners in the parliamentary votes were the Kurdish HDP, winning over 50 seats, making this new legislative body more diverse than the previous one. And it's that pluralism that many in Turkey will hope can help bridge the political divide that continues to affect Turkish society. Speaking to the nation, Erdogan seemed to understand those concerns. No one should be discriminated against in this country because of their belief, because of their gender, or because of their origins. We will not allow this. The opposition will be disappointed that they were unable to at least force a second round of voting. They will take heart, however, from their improved performance in the parliament and the fact that a relatively unknown person like Inge was able to secure 30% in such an important election. With this victory, Erdogan has not only proven once again that he is the single most popular politician in Turkey today, but by becoming the first ever executive president, he has now arguably equaled or possibly even surpassed the founder of modern-day Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, as the most significant figure in this country's recent history. Now, what he does with this new mandate will be telling his Turks look to him to solve their political, economic and social problems. Jamal Al-Tayyal, Al-Jazeera, Ankara.